Uh, there are also uh, other instances that, that, that makes us uh, that, that should make us skeptical that these are historical documents, such as the fact that it's only in the book of Matthew that there is uh, uh, presented uh, the idea that there was a great earthquake and that angels moved the stone away from the tomb and allowed Jesus to rise from the dead. You would have thought that the other gospel writers would have at least noticed that, and if they did, probably would have included it in their narratives, but they didn't. Um, elsewhere in the gospels, you okay? Very brief here, and I think we're gonna like I have probably way too detailed of a response for literally like a twenty second clip. Um, but I'll let you go to you first, Josh. I think it's a very interesting thing. I've looked at your response and it seems fascinating. And, and I think you should definitely say it because I mean, I've never heard of it before and it seems definitely fascinating. But I think essentially what we have to do when we're viewing these kind of situations, especially about these uh, different ideas is that we have to view these as people or, or I mean, disciples or whatever you want to call them, people trying to present their, their approach and their thoughts about the situation. Naturally, they're trying to present a different account or at least not a different account, but a different approach to um, a discussion as a lawyer might approach a criminal case from a certain perspective. Um, maybe a psychologist would approach a criminal, the same criminal case from a completely different psychologist. You might say, well, maybe the fact that someone used a knife to kill to kill that someone was a significant fact, and surely you can't um, you can't miss it out. But then maybe the psychologist doesn't even care if there's a knife. He's just thinking about well, what was going through his mind because he be, to uh, kill the person or the victim. So. I think in each individual situation, what may seem as a big part of the story might not actually be as big a part to the certain writer. I think that that could definitely be uh, the case in, or at least when we're talking about uh, the resurrection or the tomb moving or or the earthquake. And and also there's another thing where I sometimes think that atheists, or at least the critique of atheists, puts the Christian into a lose-lose situation. And this is not necessarily a, a formal response or anything, but it's just kind of thinking, well, Let's assume all the four Gospels said exactly the same things. There was just a few grammatical differences or a few different punctuations. You could you could almost expect the atheist to then say that it is a complete conspiracy if everything was completely the same, at least from a historical lens. If I saw um, 10 documents in from first-person sources and they all said exactly the same thing, I'll, I'll, I'll have a few red flags popping up in my mind when I'm res uh, reviewing the sources. So there's just this kind of idea that no matter what we want to do with the sources, there'll always be a bit of a problem there. So it's just best to view them as historical sources. And that's perhaps the best we could go off. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff here. And what I'll add is just like, it's almost like just like an argument from silence. Like, it seems like he's saying, so the other gospels don't record this event. So like the other gospels are unreliable. But like that just doesn't follow. And like, even if it did, like if this was a way like we did, like, arguments like there's a lot of things we're gonna have to deny so there's a great article article by tim agree on the argument from silence and he gives a couple examples here that i'm going to read first um the extant writings of greek historians of the fifth century bc make no reference to the city or people of rome therefore probably rome did not exist in the fifth century bc like that's just like obviously false but if greek historians don't mention it like ooh, well if we're gonna follow alex's line of argument then maybe we have to like deny the existence of rome um in the fifth century bc of course um Number two, extant sources make no reference to the donation of Constantine until seven centuries after Constantine's death. Therefore, probably the donation of Constantine is a forgery. Um, and number three, in his Germania, Tacitus sets himself to, in the task of enumerating the peoples of Germany. Therefore, the absence of certain Germanic peoples from Germania proved, or at least makes it very likely, that they did not exist at the end of the first century AD. Like, arguments from silence just aren't helpful. Um, and they're just, it's just fallacious. And, you know, if we get going to follow this line of reasoning then there's a lot of other historical events we're gonna have to deny which you know we don't really want to do that so yeah i just don't really see the issue here in terms of like what alex is arguing i completely agree with you on that and i don't think there's anything more i could possibly add to this argument from silence i should remain mm -hmm. silent yeah highly encourage you check out tim mcgree's article argument from silence if you want to read more on this because yeah 